The objective of this lab is to demonstrate the principle of self-proving the division of a circle. Using this principle, a rank taylor hobson autocollimator and two stack precision indexes, each index will be calibrated. Angle measurement, or the third mechanical art, as Moore describes it in his book, Foundations of Mechanical Accuracy, is quite basic to the manufacturing process. As Moore points out, angle measurement is essential in the fabrication of spindle tapers, gears, splines, cams, and tapered bearings. Over the years, many angle measuring instruments have been developed and refined. These instruments are quite diverse, varying in principle, sensitivity, and range. Before looking at some of the devices typically used for angle measurement, let's consider Moore's two principles on which angular metrology can be based. The sine principle uses the right triangle and the ratio of the lengths of the triangle sides. First, the side lengths, or distances, are precisely measured. Then, from the ratio of these lengths, the angle can be determined using the proper trigonometric relationship. It is obvious that the accuracy of the length measurements will limit the accuracy of the calculated angle. Angles measured with this principle are limited to 90 degrees, with measurements becoming less accurate as the angles increase. The division of the circle principle involves the following. The 360 degrees of a circle can be divided into any number of equal intervals, each of which will have its own amount of error. However, when the circle is closed, that is, upon returning to the exact starting point of the circle, the sum of all the interval errors will be zero. To divide a circle into its six segments using a pair of dividers, first estimate a divider spacing which, when laid out around the circle, will produce six intervals. Step around the circle until returning to the starting point. Observe the amount of error between the starting point and the ending point. Adjust the divider spacing by an amount equal to the error divided by six. Lay out the intervals again. If the error present is still unacceptable, repeat this procedure. When the divider spacing has been set such that the first and last points coincide, the circle has been closed. While all of the intervals are nominally the same, errors exist in all of the intervals, thereby resulting in uncertainty regarding the values of the individual intervals. Any one of the intervals can be used as a standard against which the other intervals can be compared. Using the first interval as a standard, we could record the deviation of the other segments from that first segment. Summing the expressions for each of the individual segments shows that the total of the six intervals minus six times the standard interval equals the total of the deviations from that standard. However, we also know that the total of all the segments equals 360 degrees. Therefore, the segment standard equals 360 degrees minus the total measured error, all divided by six. With a knowledge of the standard interval's dimension, the values of the other intervals can be determined. Notice that the total of the deviations from the nominal value is zero. While the fact that the total error in a closed circle is zero may seem quite basic, it is a cornerstone of the self-calibration principle used for calibrating two precision indexes. As I stated earlier, many types of instruments are available for angular measurement. For less precise measurement, protractors and spirit or bubble levels can be used. Sign bars and clinometers allow more precise measurement. A sign bar allows angle determination through calculations based on the trigonometric relationship of the two sides of a right triangle. A clinometer is a level which can be rotated through a graduated angle relative to its base. When the level has been zeroed, the displayed angle of rotation defines the tilt or angle in the surface on which the clinometer rests. Angle deckers are similar in operation to autocollimators, but are much less sensitive. Remember that less sensitivity is not always bad. As Hume states in his book, Metrology with Autocollimators, the best sensitivity is that which is best for the job and not necessarily the highest. For sensitivity up to half an arc second, an electronic level can be used. As we discussed in the previous lab, the electronic level uses a shaded pole inductor circuit and a pendulum to sense the tilt of the surface on which it's supported. 
Not a collimator compares the position of a target image carried by a reflective beam of collimated light with a reference to measure the very small angle changes in the reflector's position. From the last lab, we recall that some autocollimators can offer resolution of one hundredth of an arc second. Rot rotary tables are probably the most widely used circle dividing instruments. Many of these tables use worm and gear positioning mechanisms, while others use two-piece serrated face positioning sets or two-piece ball contact positioning sets. The serrated face or meshing teeth design is often used in precision indexes. The averaging effect of the numerous teeth on each plate allows an overall accuracy beyond that of the individual teeth. Some precision indexes offer quarter degree resolution with plus or minus one tenth of an arc second accuracy. In many measurement procedures, a standard is used to calibrate some particular specimen. In these cases, general practice calls for the accuracy of the standard to be an order of magnitude better than the accuracy of the proposed measurement. However, when the principle of dividing the circle is applied, the need for the higher accuracy standard is avoided. In the following experiment, we will calibrate two precision indexes without the use of a predetermined standard. Using the self-calibration principle, we can separate the measured errors to find the error for each individual interval in each index. Remember that the errors in the indexes must be repeatable for this procedure to work. The self-calibration principle can be described with the following example. Two indexes are each divided into four angular segments. The errors in the top index segments are A1, A2, A3, and A4. The errors in the bottom index segments are B1, B2, and B B3, and B4. The two indexes are stacked so that A1 is directly above B1, A2 is directly above B2, and so on. The lower index is rotated clockwise through the angle containing the error B1, and the upper index is rotated counterclockwise through the angle containing the error A4. Note that each index's angle of rotation is made relative to that index's indicator. For this procedure, the measured error would consist of the errors B1 and A4. If this procedure is repeated for the remaining segments, the errors for the series of measurements would be as shown. Other series of measurements can be made starting with different combinations of top and bottom segments. That is, with A1 directly over B4, or A1 directly over B3, or A1 directly over B2. If these measurement series are performed and combined with the first series, a table of 16 readings is obtained. To determine the interval error A1, we sum the four readings which contain the error A1. Noting that the errors B1, B2, B3, and B4 sum to zero, the sum of our error readings is simply four times the error A1. The other interval errors are determined in the same manner. Now each angular interval on the two indexes can be identified. In our experiment, the two indexes will be set up as shown. An adapter plate for joining the two indexes is attached to the top of the index which will be on the bottom. The other index is placed on top of the adapter plate so that the index's indicator lines match. The top index must be positioned such, a, such that its rotational center line is collinear with that of the bottom index. Great care must be taken to satisfy this condition since a small amount of misalignment can result in significant angular measurement error. In fact, in his book, Metrology with Autocollimators, Hume states that the most likely source of error is in the mounting of the circle eccentric with the axis of rotation. We will use an electronic indicator gauge to align the two indexes. The indicator gauge base is mounted to the bench and positioned so that its stylus probes the datum diameter of the top index. The top index is centered with respect to the bottom index. That is, the top index is located so that the indicator gauge senses no change in the position of the datum diameter when the bottom index is rotated about its axis. 
After the two indexes have been aligned, the top index is secured to the adapter plate. A reflector and autocollimator are used to measure the difference between the clockwise angular interval of one index and the counterclockwise angular interval of the other index. Since the two angular intervals are nominally the same, the autocollimator reading is in fact the difference between the errors in the two intervals. In demonstrating the self-calibration principle, we will use the Rank-Taylor-Hobson DA200 dual axis autocollimator. This autocollimator system uses an infrared light source, has one-tenth arc second resolution, and has a measurement range of plus or minus 200 arc seconds for a working distance of up to five meters or 15 feet. System accuracy is dependent on both the measurement range and the working distance used. Both attitude and altitude measurements can be made with this unit. The x-axis is the attitude axis with positive angles resulting when the left side of the reflector is closer to the autocollimator than the right side of the reflector. The y-axis is the altitude axis with positive angles resulting when the top of the reflector is closer to the autocollimator than the bottom of the reflector. To use the autocollimator, first connect the optical unit's cable to the appropriate connector on the rear of the electronic console. Connect the console's power cable to a power outlet, making certain that the supplied voltage agrees with the voltage selected on the rear of the console. Turn the console on by pressing the mains push button. Allow time for electronic stabilization. Zero both of the indexes. To protect them from damage, always leave the precision indexes locked, that is, with their teeth engaged. Prepare the reflector for the first measurement by carefully positioning it at the center of the top index so that the surface of the mirror is perpendicular to the direction from which the autocollimator's beam will originate. Take care to center the mirror so that the same amount of light will be reflected back to the detector in the different measurement steps. With both indexes still positioned at zero, place the optical unit on the three foot pads as shown. Note the use of kinematic mounting as the optical unit has three spherical feet. Kinematic mounting avoids overconstraint and the resultant lack of repeatability. Adjust the position of the optical unit until it is approximately normal to the mirror surface. Position the autocollimator as close as possible to the mirror to minimize the effects of air path fluctuation. Shielding the beam is often beneficial. Adjust the position of the optical unit until the image of the crosshairs comes into view. Continue to adjust the position of the optical unit until the graphical crosshairs and the returning image are aligned. When the alignment of the optical unit is complete, secure the foot pads with wax or some other temporary adhesive. Using the signal level knob on the front of the console, tune the signal level to the maximum level possible without causing the received signal meter to enter the red zone. The displacement indicator shows the current position in relation to the measurement range. In the lower right hand corner of the console are three switches, the shift switch, the axis switch, and the polarity switch. When these push buttons are pressed in and latched, they become illuminated. Pressing these push buttons again causes them to unlatch. The axis switch setting determines which axis will be displayed. When the axis push button is unlatched, the x axis is displayed. When the axis push button is latched in, the y axis is displayed. In our experiment, we are interested in the x axis reading.